All right. I've got to do I've got to do this somehow. I've got to I've got to make sure the Adventure Zone episode is good. So, roll for co-host. Nat 20. What up guys? It's Britta. <laughs> oh shit, the girl's back. It's fun fiction. There it is. <laughs> Welcome to Fun Fiction, ladies and gentlemen, the weekly show about movies, media, and how the internet ruins it. I am your host, Scotty Moore. And I'm your other host, Have You Missed Me? It's Brenna Clark, baby. What's up? <laughs> I did this joke before we started recording, but it's still been a long oh, day. Oh, God. I told you this is not Fast and Furious. Yes, I know. We're going to talk about Dwayne The Rock Johnson and his fun movie with the bald men today. How many times are we going to bring up The Rock in places that he should not be brought up in? I don't think there's a place where The Rock shouldn't be brought up in. Church, funerals, <laughs> marriages. Okay, the the pinnacle three. Yes. Yeah, all right. Uh, they're just like, and uh, through God and Dwayne The Rock Johnson, be blessed me. I now pronounce you man and wife. Here's the kicker. Uh, the Rock is actually the Reaper. Whoa, what? So what you're, what you're saying is at the end of the funeral, Dwayne pimps in with a scythe, and he's like, I hate to do this to y'all. And then he flashes a smile, and no one cares. Everyone's like, yeah, you. it's okay, Dwayne. We understand. Take grandma. And then, like, his eyebrow goes up, and he's like, can you smell what the rock is cooking? And then someone goes, no, that's just grandma. <laughs> no, Grammy, please. <laughs> Uh, so I'm so happy we get to talk about good, positive, nice art, because like I told you before the show, I have been watching Larry the Cable Guy Health Inspector every day for a week, and it's it's gotten to me to where a point where I'm like watching scenes from Adventure Zone, like animatics, that aren't even like my favorites, and I'm still like, this is a fucking masterpiece. I... I wish that I could be sympathetic to you, but you did this to yourself. I so. did do this to myself. And, I, okay, I can't talk about Larry the Cable Guy. This is, of course, the Fast and the Furious episode. Oh, wait, shit. No. <laughs> Adventure Zone episode, part three. And this time we're focusing on 11th Hour. And because of Stolen Century, I never remember 11th Hour's name. Like, I had to keep it written down. That really hurts my feelings, because that's my favorite arc. It's uh, No, it's a good arc. It's just like Griffin decided, like, why don't I have two separate arcs all about, and the title of them will be time-based. I mean, I guess, but they're really not that similar. <laughs> Actually, you know what? Ah, shit. We can't really talk about the similarities between the arcs, because it would spoil what Stolen Century is about, and we can't spoil. Yeah. No, we just gotta, we gotta wait. I will just say there is a very big similarity that we can talk about when we do talk about it. Uh, but yeah, and then we're also talking about my favorite arc, which is Suffering Game, which says a lot about me as a human being, where I'm just like, oh, we're putting them through their paces and killing them inside? Let's do this! Yeah, that did, yeah. <laughs> God bless you. I mean, I, they made the sacrifices they had to make in that have so much fucking weight. I know, like, even the smallest little things, it's just painful. Like, let's see where Taco loses his beauty, or becomes normal-looking, essentially. Yeah! Which, when if you think about it from a game perspective, that that does nothing. Doesn't, yeah. But, they, but to these characters, it's everything. He's just like, I need this. And then, and then he glamours himself to be beautiful. Yeah, the very next moment, he's just like, oh, well, I'm just going to cast this spell. You guys have fun with this. Yeah, like... Ugh. Um, But yeah, so what, what draws you to 11th Hour more than anything else? Other than the fact that it does essentially become a backstory cannon that shoots you in the face. Well, you know, it doesn't make any sense if I, because I usually hate that Groundhog Day type shit. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Something about the repetition just makes my brain want to explode. But I, I think that it was just like so powerful how everything through all the different resets like built up and built up. And then I don't know, the, the release at the end and then the twist. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. The big twist at the end. The big twist. Now, that you... the, 
I mean, I've had a lot of moments in this show where I've like gasped out loud, but this one like sent my head reeling and I was like, the fuck? Now there was a gasp moment from, and it wasn't from this, it was from the lunar interlude. And what's sad is I remember where I was when Taco bought the slicer of Tapir Weir Isles. I, I will, I will never forget either. I was in my car, so it's easy. Girl, but... so was I! <laughs> it, it's the most magical moment. I, my jaw was on the floor and I was screaming. Like, this was not gasping, it was screaming. <laughs> oh, yeah, no, I had the same reaction. Because just like, I don't know about you, but I'm feeling 22. No, um, I just, I don't pay attention to lunar interludes that much. I'm just like, okay, this is them having some cool scenes. There's not going to be that much until, you know, the lunar interlude that we can't talk about. That's after the um suffering game. Right. But then I was just, it was like I got woken up from a trance and was like, wait a minute. He just bought the thing that you can use to bargain for anything and the thing that ups his charisma oh shit and i think i realized at the same time that you hear griffin quiet realize it <laughs> and it's like griffin just being like oh fuck what have i done oh no i can i, I can only imagine how badly he wanted to just like shut the podcast down like no we can't do this anymore like the Adventure Zone is over. Oh, no. The Atlanta live show we went to was basically him uh, almost retconning the uh, Flaming Raging Poisoning Sword of Doom. Because that's yes. that's the one where um, the, at the end of the episode, he's just like, and then he turns back into the Flaming Poisoning Raging Sp or Sword of Doom. And then the whole crowd is like silent, like, Griffin, don't take it away from Magnus. Don't take no. it away from Magnus. No. Don't take it away. <laughs> That's another moment where I was in my car screaming because I was like, I swear to God, if Griffin, like, takes away this sword, I'm going to murder him. Well, like, I love him, but he's dead. Well, no, the worst part was the fact that um, the guy or the little kid who invented it, I'm fairly sure, was at that show. And you can't fucking do that when he's there. Well, you, and plus, like, at all, because then you're going to get sad little kid drawings of like griffin dead yeah from me no it's like the meme online it's it's a picture of travis and it says one taught me love a picture of justin <laughs> one taught me patience and then griffin it says one taught me pain that that's really good mm -hmm. you should tweet that oh yeah uh also talk it's Finally, we can talk about talking. Thank God. There are so many things like I feel like I'm in the Bureau of Ballots because I can't say anything. <laughs> but finally, my static makes sense. Yeah. Oh, my God. It's so good because I just want my boy to be happy. And he found him a lovely Grim Reaper to be with. And I I, I want one, too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and all the fan art. That's the most beautiful fan art i've ever seen in my life and the fact that like well he they canonically have cats oh yeah lots of cats <laughs> they are the best gay couple in any history ever like they're fantastic i'll be i will honestly argue this is the best lunar interlude that there ever was I would agree with that. Because in addition to this, there is also the wonderful scene where Taco, um, what's the guy who does the fantasy gosh upon? What's his name? Oh, shoot. What is his name? I don't know. It's something like normal, isn't it? Like, like hold on. <laughs> Greg. Uh, but yeah, this is finally the one where Taco finally makes him think he's actually going to put the coin oh in. Oh my god. And then <laughs> the coin just whips across the room and hits him in the head, which I think is Emily's favorite scene in the entire series, because we were listening to it in Panama City, and she just broke down crying at it. He's like, oh, Leon, that's his name. Leon, that's all right. I feel so bad for him, though, because, like, he's just so broken. Yes. Oh, man. But speaking of broken, how are you at the end of Suffering Game when fucking Magnus gets pulled out of the void by Taco and Merle in just the most beautiful scene in the entire series? I could have thrown up. I I <laughs> love <laughs> I love their relationship so much and it they draw 
on their connection as family, I think, but the the relationships that they've crafted in this game are so unlike that too. It's just yeah, beautiful. <laughs> um, but I will say, Suffering Game does have. It's not my favorite scene. We cannot discuss my favorite scene yet. But it does have my favorite scene that I feel like is not talked a lot about. And it is fucking Dupree! Dupree, man, that's... <laughs> I don't I don't know. Sometimes I think that um, Justin just, like, pulls out spell cards at random and is like, yeah, I can do that. Um, well, my favorite is because he texts it to Griffin so Griffin can DM it. And you just see Griffin look at his phone and go, oh, fuck. Damn. <laughs> Uh, this is, I think that was the arc where Griffin was like, I'm finally going to get him. I've got all these challenges. There's no way they can fuck Taco's a T-Rex now. Yep. I mean, you got to expect it from Taco. He's, I mean. Yeah. I was in a bar in Austin. It's weird how much of this that I remember where I was at when I heard it. But I was in a bar in Austin, Texas with Mad Max Fury Road playing on a screen, listening to Adventure Zone, and then Dupree happened, and I just look at my waitress like, I need the check. I have to leave. I have to go celebrate in silence right now. <laughs> I'm surprised you didn't scream in the bar. I was like, ah! And everyone would have been like, what <laughs> drugs are you on, my dude? All of them. Every single one. I'm on Taz Light. Oh, what's that? Can I get some of it? <laughs> yeah, man. And then I just put my earbuds in. But, yes! <laughs> um, but, yeah, that's one of my favorite scenes. And then Taco pretending like he does not want to do his sexy little turn on the catwalk is my favorite. Because you can even hear Justin being like, No, I'm a, I'm a wizard and a chef. I would never do something like that. And then immediately cast, like, five spells in a row. Oh, my God. Um, I... You're focusing on the really light things in this arc. I mean, we're supposed to be a happy podcast about fantastic things, and we cannot discuss Magnus giving up the memory of his wife's killer. Well, see, that's just a... I think there's something wrong with you and I both, because I think both of these arcs have really deep, dark storylines. Yes. Like, the chalice in 11th Hour pleading for one of them to like use it oh dude that's the weird like not weird but it's the first time griffin was just like hey let's make this a story so let's sit down and i'm gonna tell you guys all the reasons why you should do the thing that you should definitely not do in the story and they were i mean i i, I knew that the story went on so i knew that none of them were gonna take it but like they though they were such good reasons to right like the fact that taco could have like saved an entire <laughs> city of people that he poisoned Ma right i mean i think magnus was the strongest one of me being like i think he might turn <laughs> i think that's the first time maybe that i cried during this show was like it, it him talking about julia and why he wasn't going to take it i was just like holy shit this is real to them like you can feel it yeah well especially like i i don't know if the 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 adventure zone zone came out during this where travis discusses the inspiration for julia but isn't it's his mom in it is that in it <laughs> Uh yeah 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 he based it off of his mom and like the thoughts about losing his mom so yeah when you say that's real it is real my dude yeah so I I don't know just the amount of emotion that's in both of these arcs is something else and that's probably why they're the best ones sorry guys don't care what your opinions are but they are <laughs> also my favorite thing oh shit we can't talk about. Magnus's most of Magnus's sacrifices and the fact of why they don't matter until the next episode. Ah uh, shit. But yeah, they uh, that's the weird thing is the fact that this is when they started to turn it very much into a story-based podcast because yeah. when they were like Griffin was like, "Hey, you've got to lose a finger or you've got to lose one of your eyes or like whatever." 
they were like, fuck it. Yeah, okay, I don't care. But then, like, the story-driven shit was when, like, everyone went, okay, shut up, shut up, shut up. We, <laughs> This is really intense right now. It's crazy, like, Griffin has one of the biggest and darkest minds I have ever experienced, because the shit that he comes up with... Yeah. I would be... We've talked before about you possibly talking to Travis and vomiting oh. everywhere. <laughs> I just need... I am terrified if I ever met Griffin McElroy. I just... I would love to know... Like, I'm sure he's a little cinnamon roll, but he's got, like, some stabby McStab stab inside of him, and I... I just feel like he'd be really quiet, <laughs> and I would, yeah. and I would make me go. He hates me. He doesn't hate. He hates me so much. And the Griff's like, "No, dude, I'm playing fucking Pokemon. <laughs> <laughs> Calm down, dude." That's me at any given moment. Though, <laughs> so, <laughs> like, I'm just like, "Oh, he hates me so much. He's probably thinking about the ways he's gonna ki- ki- he's gonna kill me later." And then you just hear him be like, "Fuck yeah, Squirtle." Okay. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, I just caught one. Oh, so B, we've talked all about mine. Let's go to 11th hour. Okay. Because I know know your ass got notes. I have so many notes. Um, I will, let's just say that my favorite, well, okay, not my favorite. One of my favorite side characters is in this arc. Shit. Cassidy is- I love her so much. I don't I don't know if it's the voice that Griffin does for her or just like how hillbilly she is, but I'm just like, yes, Cassidy. Hi there, yes. hi there little gerblin. <laughs> I do <laughs> every single time. It's so good. Yeah, I was listening to uh I was watching one of the animatics from when Merle is chasing her down into the mines and then Merle starts singing Book of Mormon at her, so Griffin Oh my god, I forgot about that. <laughs> Griffin just whaps him in the head with a shovel for it. I mean, he deserved it. It's okay. Yeah. Um, but yeah, Cassidy is fucking amazing. Like, the first time he started up that voice, I was like, oh, Griffin has played. It's like the the latest um, live show where Dracula came out and everyone was Oh, Dracula! <laughs> My name is Dracula! And everyone was like, oh, this is gonna be good. That's how I felt when Cassidy came out. <laughs> I yeah, I feel the same exact way. And I was afraid before I knew what was happening that she wasn't going to like be a big thing in it and it was just going to be like that one time. Mm-hmm. So I was very pleased. Yeah. But we get some bitchin weapons in this one too cuz this is when Magnus gets his chance lance. Oh shit, I forgot this is from Ch- Chance Lance is from here. Cuz it's such an iconic part of Magnus at this point that I'm like, he's always had it. What are you talking about? I know, right? That's why when I was like reading a synopsis to refresh my memory and I saw it, I was like, "Oh yeah." <laughs> I mean, do, just... do they get do the other two get anything as Oh wait, no, that's right. Taco gets the bag. That bu- yeah. that is very important in a reason that we can't talk about today. Yep, he sure he sure does. What what does Merle get? I can't remember what Merle gets. I don't. If he got something, I didn't write it down. <laughs> You're like fuck Merle. I don't <laughs> care. I don't. I love Merle, but like I just most of the time <laughs> I focus on my boy Magnus, and I, I can't. <laughs> like I don't have enough brain space for anybody else don't worry dear i got your feelings too there's only one i really pay attention to in this bitch i know i got you yeah um oh shit we don't have much time left and i just i need to talk about how hard griffin went on the music for these two Please do go right on ahead. Because geez, I wanted to just talk about the my literally my favorite song of all time, Wonderland Part Fucking Three. But then I was listening to like older episodes, and I was like, no, it's literally everything he made amazing. Like the moment where um the town falls apart in Eleventh Hour, like the first time it happens, and you hear this horrifying music playing in the background. I'm like, that was Griffin. He did yeah. that for us. I he he like I said, I just keep going back. I just you know what? One day <laughs> a long time from now when uh he expires, 
we just need to take his beautiful little brain and just study it because I bet it's beautiful. Like, how? I don't. I don't. How does all of this come out of him? Once again, this you're the opposite of me. I don't want to study Griffin. I'm afraid of what I'll find out. I'll st- I, I'll study Travis all day because Travis <laughs> will be like, yeah, I'll tell you everything. Let's go, buddy. It's gonna have we're gonna have us a good time. But like Griffin, I feel like would be work, and I would learn things I don't want to know. That's why I said after he dies, Scotty, so he can't talk to us. But okay, so you're <laughs> meaning just the genetic makeup of his brain? Yeah, and I think before that we can push Griffin 2020, and I think I. Th- think that he would run the country pretty well i mean it's basically like dungeons and dragons he just roll dice right like yeah he's just like all right we're going to war with nepal nepal roll for army (laughs) (laughs) oh fuck they got a nat 20 damn shit shit, we're fucked we gotta give it up no that's how all everything would be decided in like i was about to say parliament but that's not how our country works in like the senate floor they're just like all right let's find out if marijuana will be legalized (laughs) that's a 14 looks like it's legal yeah i i think maybe that's what that's why this country what this country needs i think i think we need to vote that way (laughs) We, no, I don't want. I don't want that kind of risk, Bryn. I don't want that. <laughs> but you, do you know what I do want? What do you want? I'll tell you what I want. What I really, really want. So tell me what you want. What you really, really want. I want to. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I want. I want. I honestly do want one of the brand new, dopest shit BS Network ugly Christmas sweaters. Hell yeah! That, ho ho ho, bitches! Yeah, that came out today. You know, well, we're recording this on Cyber Monday, but yeah, uh, we released on merch dot a load of pure bs dot com a series of five Christmas sweaters. We've got one for each of the shows, a BS Network one. And Brent, I'm not gonna lie, my favorite's definitely the fun fiction one. I mean, it looks pretty dope. I, I like because I assumed because it's a Christmas sweater, my only color palette was green red and white and then i like accidentally hit the invert button and went oh that looks dope this is it this is it i'm done i fixed it mom (laughs) good for me so if you would like to pick up some of those you can over at merch.aloadofpurebs.com and now brenna i don't know if you know it's been a while but this show is about fan fiction it what if fan, f- I don't. I'm just a simple small town lawyer, but uh, let me tell you, on the internet, people do be writing stories about things that are not their intellectual property, and because of that, they make fan fiction. Did I? Ex- oh. did I explain that good? Uh, uh, yes. Um, and we found us some good stories. In the world of the Adventure Zone, and I will start off with mine, and mine is going to be hard to read. Okay, it's called If Wishes Were Horses by Druzy. Oh, thank God. <laughs> and, what? I was just scared that we were going to have the same one again. Oh, no, that was that was probably the worst, where we were just like, oh, I guess we're just going to read this entire long thing. Okay. But before we get into the fan fiction, I do want to ask a question, because it is about Taco and Magnus becoming one single entity oh 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 i've read this one yeah and, but here's the thing do i do you want me to try to talk as both at the same time or just as taco because i tried it earlier and it doesn't come out well when i try to mix them together let's just say um just do taco, because I like your taco voice. Yeah, just do taco. That was my catchphrase in college. Uh. <laughs> All right. This is If Wishes Were hers- hor- Hearses, Horses, once again. This is chapter one, hot and fresh out the kitchen. Oh, my God. Hey, real quick. Who are you? 
this is your first time here in the world, and you're not used to being. You've never been before. All you really know is that there's a guy named Magnus and a guy named Taco, and that you're some kind of amalgam of a guy named Magnus and a guy named Taco. Well, see, now you exist. You should probably have a name of your own, but you're not going to go with some bullshit like Mag Magnaco. No, this has got to come from the heart. Your name is Pork Pockets. Yeah, oh man, uh -huh. you feeling it. You're living your truth, Pork Pockets. And your truth is that you are a cool, cool party dude whose name is Pork Pockets. You're in the middle of a field, and it's full of dandelions. The hairy silver ones that only grow during the summer. And you're in front of a big, big marble fountain topped with a life-size statue of two figures, an elf and a human. The human has his arm around the elf's shoulder. The statue is really nice compared to the rest of the fountain, which looks like it's seen better days. Standing next to you is an older dwarven man with dated eyeglasses, flowers in his beard, and an arm that looks like it's made out of bark. He looks at you, then at the fountain, then back at you. He puts his hands on his hips like, Huh! Um, hey, little well-met, old-timer, you say. You don't really know what kind of relationship, if any, you're supposed to have with this dude, so you're not sure whether to go for a hug or a handshake. You settle for a hair tussle. Eesh! That's one hell of a voice you got there. He says, smoothing out his hair. Never, never heard a gravelly falsetto before. So, uh, what's your name, Capadre? You ask him. Uh, who are you? What's your story? Oh, man, you really don't have any of their memories, he says. Yeah, bud, I only know what's on Taco and Magnus's character sheets, you tell him. I might need you to connect some dots. Well, kind of a tall order. Guess I'll start with me, he says. My name is Merle Highchurch. I'm a cleric. Me, Magnus, and Taco, we all work together as... <laughs> at the... <laughs> he puts his hands on his hips. That's the broad strokes version anyway. How? You just made static with your mouth. How did you do that? You ask. Is that some kind of forbidden throat singing technique? Can you teach me? Ah, oh, shit, yeah. Guess you wouldn't be able to hear that, says Merle. Listen, don't worry about it. It won't be important for this side quest. He leads you away from the fountain. Oh, for the love of balls, I'm here on a side quest? He sighs. Afraid so, Tagnus. My name is Pork Pockets. Oh, good. So, fill me in, Pops, you say to Merle. You're climbing up a steep, grassy hill. What's the situation? What are we fighting and or saving? We're fighting something called the Dobbin of Kimberwick, and we're saving something called the Town of Kimberwick, he says. Apparently, you're the only one who could defeat it. I'm just here as a glorified chaperone. Uh-huh. Um, what's a Dobbin, you ask? I don't know, some kind of magical creature, says Merle. Some kind of kaiju. Ryland said it was like a big, veiny dog with mallets for feet. Ooh, I'm loving it so far. You have no idea who this Ryland fool is, but you're not about to ask, seeing as the ground is starting to shake. You hoist Merle under your shoulders and sprint to the top of the hill. Below you in the distance is a little village. You see smokestacks. You see thatched roofs. You see linen awnings. You see overturned carts and rickshaws. You see people running and screaming. And finally, you see it. The Dobbin of Kimberwick. Oh, son of a... shouts Merle. That's a fucking horse! He's right. It is a fucking horse, but it's a really, really big one. Like ten times the size of just a regular big horse. It's rearing while flaming arrows fly at it left and right. You gasp and bring your hand up to your mouth. They're going to kill him! Not at this rate, says Merle. That's where we come in. What the fuck? No! I don't want to hurt it. Look at it. It's fucking majestic, you say. No, no, absolutely not. We're doing this my way. Which is? You look out onto the village and crack a little smirk. We're gonna ride this bitch into the sunset. And that, I'm going to say, is to be continued, because that's a very long fic, and we've already gone long as it is. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> I've read it, and it's good, so you guys should too. It's the ultimate cl it's like the ultimate cliffhanger. We're gonna ride this bitch into the sunset. Goodbye. Dot dot dot. Yeah. Um yeah, it's a really good fic though. Y'all need to check out If Wishes Were Horses by Druzy.
All right, B, that's mine. What have you brought to the table, my dude? I have Heart to Heart to Heart by Indian underscore Inc. And it's also extremely long, so I'm going to try to find a cliffhanger, too, as I'm reading it. Okay. Okay. It was all so stupid. He was Magnus Burnside's. He loved Julia Burnside's more than anything in the world. He was Stephen Waxman's son-in-law, the hammer to his tongs. Raven's Roost, abandoned and desolate as it was, was his home. He was good with his hands and good with animals and wanted to do nothing more than do good. He knew who he was. Except for all that static he had seen in his own past. Except for the plans of Refuge's central statue. Except for the fact that he was, or would one day become, a red robe. The Red Robes had created the relics, tried to poison him and Taco and Merle, killed Captain Bane in cold blood. Because of them, Gundren, Hurley, and Sloane, and hundreds of others were dead. The vision of Phandalin being consumed by flames achingly slow crawled across his mind like a slug too often these days. The director was hiding something, but the fact that the Red Robes were evil didn't seem to be it. He had all the evidence he needed to come to that conclusion for himself. How did it happen? How was it going to happen? Why hadn't Istis warned him? Had she not known? What if, and this was the question that nodded his insides, kept him tossing and turning at night above all the others? What if one day he hurt Taco or Merle? What if he enjoyed hurting them? The tears rose up again like a river flooding with rainwater. He hated this. This not knowing, this helplessness, this fear that aided him. It drove him out of his bed night after night to sit alone in the shared common room, shaking and sobbing, and he hated it. A door opened behind him, and Magnus jumped, quick to wipe at his eyes, through, it, though his shoulders still shook. With a glance over the back of the couch and to the rest of the apartment, he saw Morrill shutting the door to his bedroom, his snowy white beard and hair almost shining in the darkness. "'Hey, Merle, Magnus said, trying and failing to dispel the tightness in his throat. He cleared his throat and tried again. "'What are you doing up?' The dwarf watched him for a moment, eyes narrowing slightly behind his glasses, and Magnus worried that he could see the tears in his eyes even from a distance. But eventually Merle shrugged and said, "'Could ask you the same thing,' shuffling into the kitchen. Magnus watched his flight flooded into the kitchen from the icebox, though it wasn't like any icebox he had ever seen. Knowing what he knew now about Lucas Miller, he assumed that the huge upright thing made of steel was something the inventor had stolen from visions seen in that emerald compact of his." Merle poured himself a glass of water, then the kitchen lit up again as he put the pitcher back. "'Do you wear that to bed?' Magnus asked, nodding at the sole wood arm that Merle used to, carry the, used to carry the water with him as he made his way over to sit on the other end of the couch. "'Nah, it just it needs some time in the soil during the night or it gets all grumpy,' Merle replied, switching the glass to his other hand so he could flex the wooden fingers of his right. "'But I haven't really been asleep, been up breeding. "'Oh.' The hope that maybe Merle hadn't heard him crying took a heavy blow, but as Merle took a sip of the water, Magnus felt himself smile slightly for what was maybe the first time in hours. Chug! 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 What? Merle glanced up at him, the glass still to his lips. Magnus, it's just what- Chug! 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 Magnus, chant Magnus chanted, the smile turning into a grin. Merle rolled his eyes, but there was a definite upward twitch to his mustache, and he lifted the glass up to gulp down the contents. There was still an aching emptiness in his chest, but Magnus laughed and applauded. Thank you, thank you, Merle said, bowing to an, ad an imaginary crowd. I'll be here to till Tuesday. Silence and something like anticipation settled over them, and suddenly Magnus knew, he knew, that Merle was about to ask some uncomfortable questions. He wanted to sprint to the kitchen, pour out a dozen glasses of water, and challenge Merle to a drinking contest. First one who has to pee loses. Anything to keep those questions away, but Merle cleared his throat and put the glass down on the coffee table. Listen, Magnus, Merle said, voice even rougher than usual. I've heard you out here the past few nights, crying. Uh, I, I uh, don't know what your... The feeble lie trailed off as Magnus caught sight of Merle's stern frown. Magnus added embarrassment and shame to the top of the pile of stupid, frustrating emotions he was feeling and sighed. I don't... He paused. I don't want to talk about it. Wasn't the right thing to say, because Pan, Istis, whatever deity, damn it, he desperately wanted to talk about it. But his mind turned to static whenever he tried to think too hard about the statue, and the only thing he knew for sure was that Merle had as many reasons to trust a red robe as he did. Zero. Zilch. I don't think... I should tell you. Merle thought this over, stroking his beard. 
Is it about what the chalice showed you? He asked eventually. I know you didn't want to talk about that back at refuge, but we could now. No, it's not that. But that wasn't true either, because the thought of getting Julia back aided him too. Not exactly, he amended. Magnus sat in silent for a moment, thinking how to put his fears into words. Merle waited patiently beside him. Remember, Camp Goodfriend, Magnus finally said, when that ceiling was coming down on us and I thought we were all going to die, I said that you were glad you got a new family, Merle finished softly. I remember. And I'm just... Fuck, here came the tears again. I'm scared as shit that one day I'll hurt you or Taco and I won't be able to stop it. Whoa, 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 hold on a second. Merle raised his hands in surrender as he leaned back against the cushions, taken aback. What are, what are you talking about hurting us? The face of that stupid statue flashed through Magnus's head again, his own face on top of that stupid red robe. If he told Merle now what would happen, would he run as far and as fast as his legs could carry him? Would he tell the director? What would she do to him? To be continued. Oh, snap. <laughs> I like we went both ways. We went goofy as shit, and then also let's make you cry. Oh, yeah, it's real good. And Taco comes into play later and makes it even more sad, so... Well, I mean, when it's called heart to heart to heart, I'm like, where's my boy at? Yeah, sorry. I <laughs> started with Magnus Emerald because it hit me the hardest. Leaving me out. This is bullshit. But there was some good, like, I don't know, dad vibes. And I was like, oh, my cross. Good dad vibes. <laughs> Oh, man, I wish we still named these not after just what we're talking about and had a quote, because the title of this would definitely be Good Dad Vibes. Good Dad Vibes. <laughs> uh, but you know who I get good, probably not dad, but good vibes from? Who do you get good vibes from, Scotty? All of our lovely patrons at patreon.com slash a load of BS. That's right. That's where you can go and support the entire BS network, but especially fun fiction, ladies and gentlemen. You get ex you get exclusive perks like access to our Discord where you can hang out and chat with us. You get shouted out on the show of your choice every single week like the good boy Joe Gennaro. Love you, Joe. Joe's Joe's the best. Jo like, I was tweeting to, I'm trying to get host of Ner Nerds Who Make and friend of the show, Zach Moore, no relation on the show. And I tweeted him, and then Joe just followed us along and liked everything in the, in this, like, in the conversation. I was like, God bless you, Joe. He's a good boy. We like him. And if you want to join Joe, you can over at patreon.com slash a load of B. S. Now, I'm gonna, uh, I guess spoilers for the next episode, I'm gonna make you cry your fucking eyes out next episode. So, uh. so for today, the adventures of Sidney Rosenthorn are actually gonna be relatively light. Relatively light. Just a Hell fun adventure. Yeah. Okay. I, you know what's shocking, Britta? What? They're, you, okay, depending on what path you take there may be both dungeons and dragons on this adventure the fuck is going on i know um but since we last left sydney she decided to stick around in goldcliff she liked it a lot there she found that they were very easy marks to hustle and right and she eventually found work as a bartender at a local tavern slash boarding house I mean, I'm not sure how this 14, 15-year-old girl is working as a bartender, but it's fantasy. Well, also, she's a pretty good liar, so... Yeah, that's probably what it is. She's just, like, yeah. lying. Uh, but, yeah, she'll, like, give tenants their keys and collect, like, wake them up in the morning and stuff like that. And then she also has... deals out bars, gives out chips, peanuts, bar shit. <laughs> bar shit bar shit prangles don't coconuts um so one day you're working at the bar how is she feeling this day how's it it's been a while since we've seen sydney how's she's feeling well if she's been working probably the drudgery of uh the i would say nine to five but uh if she's a bartender she's probably working way later hours than that um, and also, has, she's also still hustling, but that's more like Uber. She gets to choose her own hours. 
Right. So I think the hustling is the only exciting part of her day and the only thing she gets to look forward to. And the rest of it's kind of just like, oh, God, kill me now. OK, so you're at the bar. There's like a few people. But this is like the beginning of the night. So the usual crowd hasn't come stumbling in from work in the mines yet. And then you see a fellow walk in and every once in a while there's like rabble that comes in, like homeless people and adventurers. But this one seems different, and he walks up to the bar, and he actually looks fairly young, but his face seems very, very weathered, like he has been through a lot in the past year, and he's kind of got this, not a hood, but like a cloak over him, and he takes it off now that he's out of, I guess it's cold there, because it's winter, it's candle nights, he sets it down, and then he looks up at you, and he his eyes widen, and your eyes widen as you realize that it's Garen. The fuck? <laughs> <laughs> Is that your first word still, <laughs> uh, No, I think that's, like, uh, <laughs> under my breath. <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't control my, uh... It's more like a... <laughs> the fuck? <laughs> uh so yeah your old classmate who you thought died is still alive and he's he's here and he, he looks at you and goes sydney what uh, what are you doing here I, honestly what are you doing here i thought you were dead oh i mean kind of the same same thing for you second verse same as the first but no i wasn't in town i was actually on my way to uh I was on the way to your farm when the attack happened. You, really? Yeah, I was uh um I was uh trying to uh I was trying to re- uh, return a pencil that you lent me the day before. And that that's what that's the only reason I was going there but no one no one was there. And then I oh <laughs> did did I give you a pencil? I don't Do we even do we do we use pencils? I mean, yeah, yeah, you don't rem- you must have you had a hard time with the whole city going up in flames thing. So that's that's probably what it is. Oh, sure. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. So yeah, now I'm just kind of traveling from city to city trying to find money. Like there's no school that'll take me at this point. So I'm trying to head out to Sapphire Falls, see if I can go out to the mines, get a gig out there. Do you know anybody out there? The mines? Why would you want to do that? It's Sapphire. What is wrong with Sapphire's rubies, gold? This is called Gold Cliff. There's riches out there to be discovered, and I need some. You you know what's also waiting to be discovered is, like, rock slides and, uh, toxic gas <laughs> oh yeah well you know what 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 i i didn't think about that i also didn't think about my entire city being set on fire and my parents dying i know you don't know anything about that brenna or sydney uh, but uh, <laughs> who the fuck is brenna? <laughs> um you look a lot like a girl i met on the rock for oh okay well listen who i can you know what? We should. You should just stay here. I mean, it's it's nice to see a a friendly face for once, and maybe maybe we can do some thieving together. What? I uh, I mean, do you want to? Maybe I could just see if you could help out at the at the bar with the thieving. Uh, uh, <laughs> I'm just kidding. I don't. <laughs> What's that? Okay, can I get some food for right now then? I, I really want some Pringles, but everywhere is sold out. They keep saying these three guys with bracers keep coming in and stealing all their Pringles. I don't know what that's about, but do you I guys don't... have anything? Uh, We don't have Pringles, but we probably have some, like, peanuts. I did confirm that you have Pringles in the opening line. Oh, <laughs> okay, so we do have Pringles, just kidding. Okay, okay, yeah, awesome. Um so can I get a place to stay? I've been I I've been walking all day. I need to get off my feet. I uh I could check and see if there's some rooms available. <laughs> Roll for rooms. <laughs> okay, hold on, wait. Uh well I got a thirteen. 
There's 13 rooms available. Cool. Okay, so yeah, sure. Stay here. It's cool. Oh, okay, awesome. Um, thanks a lot. Do you do you force him to pay for the Pringles? <laughs> no, I think that's on me. Okay, okay. Um, and he's just like, uh, I think in the morning I do want to at least head out to Sapphire Falls. I really want to see what's out there. Well, do you want some company? I'm sure I can take a day off or something. Uh, yeah, yeah, sure, we can do that. Uh, and then he goes up the stairs, and he goes to his room. And it's, then you kind of have your shift, everything happens, and then, I I have not figured out where you sleep, but you just kind of, <laughs> you sleep somewhere. And of course, the next day, you it's your job to go and knock on all the doors and wake everybody up. And, uh, you knock on Garen's door. Foley work, I like Thank it. you. No response. Oh, shit. You, you said... <laughs> you knock on the door once again. No response. And so what do you do now? <laughs> uh, I'm going to guess that I have, like, a skeleton key. Yeah. Absolutely. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to open the door. I knock twice. I'm going to open the door. Okay. Uh, you walk in, and uh, just as I said, room is empty. Doesn't seem like there's much of a sign of a scuffle, though. But there are a lot of Pringles crumbs, and if you look at if you look at your feet, you do see some Pringles crumbs trailing out of the out of the room. Uh, okay, so I guess I'm gonna follow the Pringles. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that follow the Pringles is a good episode title too. Um, and so you f- do follow the Pringles, and sure enough, they eventually lead you out into the street, out through out of the town. He had a lot of Pringles. Apparently. I was about to say how the fuck, but okay. <laughs> and then uh, you find a empty, crushed Pringles can. And you are right in front of the entrance of Sapphire Falls. This bitch. <laughs> what do you do? Uh, well, I'm. I guess I'm gonna yell for him real quick. No response. <laughs> Great. Uh, sh- gonna go for it. Just okay. So you hop en- right in. You enter Sapphire Falls, and it's this beautiful cave with these uh, amazing. Uh, man, not man-made, but like made through history structures, and they actually they said the miners used to go insane down there because they would start to see shapes in the structures, and you yeah. so you would see like a dragon up there, you would see like something down there, and they're like, no, there's a dragon, there is, and they're like, that's just a rock, um, and so you go through, and then you finally come across the falls of Sapphire Falls, which is this massive underground waterfall and in front of the falls this kind of lake area where the falls are happening you see a pedestal what do you do uh, it, it does the pedestal have anything on it uh yes it has a book and a pencil oh wow well, a pencil okay so mm-hmm. i guess i'm going to inspect the book Okay, you pick up the book, you open it, and it's written in a orcish language, so you can't- I think you only speak, like, halfling, so you're a little, you're a little screwed there. Um, so, so you can't really read the book. It's a lovely red-bound book, but otherwise it's kind of useless. Okay, um, <laughs> this is gonna sound so dumb. I'm going to inspect the pencil. The minute you pick up the pencil- the pedestal begins to drop into the ground. Shit. And the cave begins to fill with water from the falls. Damn it. Cool. Great. Um, I will say, uh, I may have done a fib. It looked like a pencil. As you pick it up, you realize it's actually a wand. Oh! <gasps> oh! I haven't had one of these in a long time. <laughs> and if you will look at your character sheet, I have upped your wizard score. <laughs> Or wizarding level. Oh, shit. Okay, well, uh, let me look at my spells real quick. Um, While you do that, I will describe the room. There is, of course, the Great Fall directly in front of you. There are three doors, the one you came in, one on the left, and one on the right, these metal doors with letters beside them. 
With levers? Levers. Le- can I use a third level spell? Yes, you can use any of the spells that you, I've given you. Okay, there's one called water breathing <laughs> that I think I'm going <laughs> to use. You use water breathing. Okay. Um, I will. I will also say that book is not is not there for no reason. Um. Oh, can I can I grab the book? <laughs> yeah, you can use the book. You can grab. Oh. You have book. But okay, but I can't read it. Hold on. Oh uh, yeah, hold on. <laughs> <laughs> oh hey. <laughs> I want to, I want, can I, okay, so I'm breathing the water, right? Yes. Well, it's not, I'm going to take a guess and say the room is not full yet. It's not full yet. It's probably up to your waist. Cool. So I'm going to take the the book out and I'm going to cast also Comprehend Languages. Thank you. (laughs) Oh my god. Brenna, I'm not going to lie. If you hadn't have done this, you would have been so fucked. Um, I wouldn't have. (laughs) All right. You uh, open the book. And there's really only that one orcish phrase, and it does say, The left door spells your doom. The right oh. shall be your tomb. There is Uh-oh. no escape that you can see, but the water of the falls shall set you free. Um, And as soon as you read it, the door behind you shuts. So there's no exit either. So your choices are one of the two doors. Can I, can I just stay in the room that I'm in? I mean, you can, but it will be filled with water eventually. You, I yes. will say, you need to leave this room, Brenna. Fine. Okay, well, I don't... Tomb means, like, dead. Doom, for sure. Doom means dead. No, not, not like, not... No. Okay. <laughs> so I guess we're gonna go to the left door. Alright, you go to the left door... And there's this old rusted, um, an old rusted la- lever. You pull it back, I assume. Yeah. Don't want to don't railroad the character. <laughs> uh, and then uh, the door slowly slides out of the way. And then you just see beautiful, like, gold, rubies, sapphires, all there in this massive pile in front of you. What do you do? Um, look f- for a way out. I don't, I could care less about the rubies and shit. Could care less. Okay, roll for, um, roll for perception. Okay. Uh, so I got an 11 plus 2 is 13. Okay. With a 13, you see, um, a few more of those kind of, uh, rock-like structures. Like, you see one that looks like a big dragon. You see one that looks like a, uh, like a toadstool coming out of the ground. And you, like I said, you saw the massive pile of jewelry in front of you. And then you do see to your right, you do see a doorway out. Okay. Well, I mean, I'm guessing that... If I try to go out, something's going to stop me. Um, what makes you can, think that? Just run for it. I No, Scotty. It's, it's fine, Brenna. Um, <laughs> just can I, go, just nope, go for it, dog. Nope. Can, I, can I pick up like a, a pretty sizable treasure trunk, like chunk of treasure and toss it towards the door? Um, I will say, okay, the... The door is between you and the treasure. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um. Well, can I... I want to... I'm going to take out my crossbow. Just on a hunch. And yep. I, I just want to shoot a bolt towards the door. Towards the door? Yes. Okay. You shoot it. And nothing happens. Okay. All right. So I guess... <laughs> I guess I'm gonna oh I uh against my better judgment, I'm gonna walk towards the door. With what speed would you say you're walking towards this door? I'm not walking quickly, Scotty. I'm being very cautious. Um roll okay, if you're trying to be cautious, if you're trying to be sneaky, roll uh it wouldn't be deception, would it? Um maybe I have stealth. Yeah, roll stealth. Okay. We're so good at D and D. Oh, I got a seventeen. Plus two is nineteen. Plus two is nineteen. Okay, you get to the door. Um, 
and then you see a ba- basically it's not a keyhole per se it's kind of like a indention of a coin okay shit so i have to look for in the treasure yes uh, all right so mm, it hey can roll, i <laughs> roll, roll that stealth one more time if you're going over to that Fuck shit, damn. Well, before I do that, can I just um in- investigate the uh the hole just to memorize, like make sure I get the right thing? Yeah, yeah. You know? Go right ahead. Okay. Is my investigation really plus ten? Yeah, you. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, dog. When I was <laughs> when I was uh, upping your character sheet, I saw that myself and went, "Oh, damn! She'll know everything." Well, um, it's good because I rolled a three, so it's a 13. <laughs> it's a 13. Yeah, you've got a decent idea of what it looks like. Okay. Well, here's my, my, my stealth again. Um, I got an 18 plus two is a 20. Ah! <laughs> uh, hold on one second. Dang it, Scotty. No. <laughs> okay, no, no. You're good. You're good. Okay. Just go look through the gold for a few and then roll a perception. All right, perception. Rifling through some gold. Uh, well... I hate to say it, um, but I got a nine plus two is eleven. Um, you do not find the gold. Roll another stealth check for me. Shit. Okay. Oh, I got a nat twenty. So that's a <laughs> that's a twenty two. Okay. Um, I will allow you to roll twice now. To look for the coin. To look for the coin. Yes. Okay. What is this again? It's perception. Perception, okay. Uh, that was a 13. Nope. And that was uh, an 18. You find the coin. Great! <laughs> Roll one last. <laughs> stealth check? One last stealth check. Damn it! Hold on! Okay. Pan, is this whoever, please <laughs> help me. Oh shit. Um that that's a 10. Well, Brenna, <laughs> you know how I said that they said that the reason the miners died is because they went insane claiming that the rocks looked like certain individuals. Right. Yeah, that big ass dragon rock turns towards you and starts oh, growling pretty shit. fucking loud. And a massive wyvern with dark skin that makes him blend in with the rocks turns towards you, and he don't look happy. Cool. Um, can I, uh, how close am I to the door? Um, I'm going to say it would be at least a turn before you could get to the door, if we're going full D&D rules. Um, okay. Oh, shit. Uh, shit. Hold on. (laughs) I'm not good under pressure. Here, I think the dragon wants to fight, so at least roll, um, roll for initiative. Okay, that's fine. I got... Oh, that's a... Yes? What did you get? (laughs) That's not how it works. I got a seven. (laughs) Yeah, I got an 18. (laughs) Cool. Sure. Yeah, so, um... This boy, he's also very perceptive, so you were doing very good to miss his uh, his stuff. I realize that. Um, and I think he's going to use his stinger, because it's the thing that he can reach the farthest with. And let me just roll that. Oh, fuck! He got a critical failure! Yes! <laughs> okay. What I think happens is he yeah. misses, but he connects with the gold coin in your hand. No, Scotty! Wait. And then keeps carrying it forward until it gets into the slot by the door. <laughs> yeah. And now he's impaled and stuck through his stinger. And the door opens. You've beaten my wyvern yes! puzzle. <laughs> so that didn't even do anything. Holy shit! Uh, and you thought your dice were good. I was, I was so fucking... No, I didn't want you to fight this dude. He has 110 hit points in his very deadly 19th strength. 
Um, okay, so now you finally walk into a room and you see you see daylight on the other side of the room, but you also see a massive pit and dangling above that pit you see Garen. Oh no. And in front of Garen, it, oh also you can see um you can see a doorway and on the other side of it is the fucking waterfall. Because you could have just walked through the waterfall and not had to fight a wyvern. Um, okay, but guess what? I won, so who yeah! gives a shit? <laughs> I won! Fuck you! Um, and in front of this pit, you see a very tall, slender individual, long white hair, just kind of staring up at Garen, like, uh, not even looking happy or pleased with herself she just looks very solemn and uh so what do you do so uh hey yes and then she turns towards you and you see that she has a old distraught tabard on and it's very like wrinkled and there's like slices in it But there is a very recognizable symbol on it, and it is that of a large white spider. And she she is holding a broken piece of staff, has long white hair flowing down, and you recognize her because she's the only face you could remember from the night where your parents were killed. Hey, I know you. Yes, and I know you. In fact, um, I'll be honest with you, I'm sorry about him. It's- I didn't want to hurt him, I I don't- I don't even care about him, to be honest. I care about you. Wait, hurt who? The- the- the big boy. The one who's hanging above the pit? That one. How- you- what did you do to him? Well, he's kind of hanging above a pit that looks fairly bottomless, precariously hung by a rope. So, I mean, it's not that I hurt him a lot, but I could. Hmm. I'm just saying, it's not about... It's not about him. It's about us, sweetheart. What do you want from me, then? I want you... I want you to join me. I want you... I'm sorry, I... I need to stop this. I know I can't fix what Krsh broke. I can't fix him at all. I just need you to know the man that you saw that night, the man that took your parents away, that wasn't my... I don't know... I don't know who he was. I... I... I, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm not... I'm not getting most of what you're saying. Oh, I don't... I, I'm, I'm sorry, I forgot that the others don't know that they can't know. At least that's what he told me. Every time I heard that damned static, he said that I couldn't know. I should know, but now I know everything. You see, he knew those bastards were up to no good, and he gave me a failsafe. A vial of black ooze that showed me the light. It showed me the truth about those people. The ones with the bracers. They're here to punish us. They're here to destroy us. I forgot my husband's face, Sydney. But you see, I wanted to show you today what it felt like. What it felt like when everything was taken away from you. Just like they did to me. They took my husband. They turned him into a wicked shell of what he once was, and then they killed him. I don't... That uh, Look, I... I have been... I've, I've thought the way you've thought, but those... They... They helped me. I don't... Yes, they help everyone, don't they? That's just what they want you to believe. Look... I can give you this. I can give you the knowledge that they think you're too weak to understand, Sydney. But I know you're strong. I've seen you. Drink this. 
And then from within her coat, she produces a vial of what we and you as Taz fans know as <laughs> void as void fish icker. And she just holds it out to Sydney and says, Join me and we shall destroy those men. Those men that allowed your parents to die. The men that forced you to forget the face of their killer. Everything will be revealed, Sydney, if you just join me. And then uh, from above her, Garen's kind of like scuttling and trying to escape his bindings. Uh, that's probably not the best idea. Is there any way that like I can subtly cast feather fall without her noticing? Probably not, because she's looking at me. She'll probably <laughs> notice. Um, look, no, I think she sees you about to do feather fall. She's like, look, you can do it, but that's an almost bottomless pit. He'll hit, all you're going to do is make him suffer further because he's going to float to the bottom and then stay there and stop. I don't, I'm sorry. I'm not really understanding why you want this. Like, I mean, I, I, I get that you're upset and My. we're kind of, we're on the same side, but also... Whoever you're talking about, you you say that he he killed my parents. I don't. Why would I want? I just don't. I don't understand. I don't understand what's in this for me. I don't get it. I can give you knowledge, Sydney. I can give you the knowledge of everything. I know everything. You people think you know anything. You know. Nothing compared to me. And it's all within this vial. I can save you. I can make you better than you ever were before. I just need you to help me. I, you, if you would have come to me just like face to face, we could have had an actual conversation about this, but you have... I don't even know what to call him. I guess the only friend that I have up over a bottomless pit and you're asking me to join you? I don't... Like, this doesn't make sense. He'll be down. I'll let him down if you just join me. Oh, I don't think this is a good idea. Fine. And then she suddenly disappears. Ah, oh, fuck. And you cannot see her. Okay. And uh, she, then you hear her voice echoing throughout the chamber, and it's saying, Do you see this? This lack of knowledge, this lack of intelligence, this fear that's growing inside of you. I can save you from that. As long as you help me, as long as you get my, help me get revenge on the people who forced me to forget the face of my own husband. Please. Sorry, I'm not ignoring you. I'm trying to figure out what I need to do. Uh, I like that's in character from (laughs) Sydney. Just like, I'm not ignoring you. Just give me a minute. Just hold the fuck on. I don't know what's (laughs) happening. Hold the fuck on. Uh... So you've got an invisible lady spider. Right. And you have Garen still precariously hanging over a near bottomless pit. Okay. I think I'm going to cast Detect Magic. Okay. So, because it it says that I can see if... Oh, no, wait. Never mind. Well, I mean, it does say you sense the presence of magic within 30 feet, so you would possibly be able to find her out, because she is... This is a spell you have to hold on yourself, so you would be able to see her through this. Okay. So I guess I do want to do that. Okay. Uh, it becomes clear where she is, and she's all like literally two steps from where she was. Cool. But she um, does not... Hold on. Let me roll perception really quick for her, and I'll see if she... Oh, no. She does not fucking realize that you know where she is. Okay. So... I don't, I don't, I don't necessarily want to attack her, but, like, 
I, I mean, if you were chaotic neutral, I would give you the advice of she's right in front of a bottomless pit. I know, but I don't feel like... <laughs> That's not my code. Um, no, Sid- yeah, Sydney's chaotic good, I think. Let's do... <laughs> I don't want to hurt her, really. Damn it. Fine, okay. I guess we're going to do um just 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 a little bit of burning hands just for some fun. Just some burning hands? Yeah. Okay. Um uh, each creature in a 15 foot cone. I don't think Garen's in that, so you're good. Must make a dexterity saving throw. Let me see. And while I do that, uh I will take 3d6 on a fail save or half as much on a successful save. All right, he rolled a 13 which narrowly loses. <laughs> Against your uh, against that saving throw. So, how much damage my girl taken? Uh, three d six, right? It's three d six. Yes. Okay, five. I'm uh, already scared. One. Okay. And three. Okay, so that's five, one, three. That's nine. Okay. Well, now you know, home girl coming back at you, and she just she just simply goes, you know. I didn't just love my husband. I taught him a few things as well. Of course you did. And then she casts the great magic missile, and then three glowing darts of magical force head straight for your ass. Well, I am going to um, cast shield. Okay. Um, I, don't, I think you have to do that. I do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't think you. I don't think it's like Yu Gi Oh, and I just activated your trap card. Um, so you take Damn. a whole five. A whole five, cool. So also, I will say she mo- She uses her move at this point to get the fuck away from the hole. Okay, that's a good plan. Yeah. Um, I wish I had something that like could bind this bitch. Uh, um, okay, Brenna. What? Oh. Not- <laughs> it's bind. Oh. Well, I just, I don't want to hurt her per se, but I want to, like, incapacitate. Mm-hmm. You know what? I guess I'm going to, um, cast Magic Missile right back at her. Okay. I mean, if if you're going to go full taco, you know what you have to say at this point. <laughs> Africa, fuck you. Okay, roll. Uh, that would be a two, my dude. A two, okay. Okay, so two, three times four, that's twelve. Oh, she ain't looking good. Uh, she is not looking good at all right now. So I think in reply, she just goes, wait, 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 wait. I start to feel very, very woozy at this point in the fight, and I just can't, can't, but and then... You see her two eyes split into four eyes. Oh no. Split into eight eyes. Split into sixteen on both sides of her head. As two massive uh massive legs come shooting out of her back, and she has cast polymorph, a spell you know all too well from your family on herself, and has turned into a giant fucking spider. Shoot. Oh man, the spider thing. I really should have put him in webbing. That would have been a lot cooler, but no, he's just tied up in a rope. It's too late now. It's too late. Garen's just whatever. She does start to crawl up the uh, the rope while you're making your first attack. Shit. Okay, can I cast um, color spray? Okay. And blonde this bitch. As long as it's not going to hit Garen. How about this? Roll. I don't know what you would roll for this. Because the total is how many hit points of creatures this spell can. Oh, wait. Okay. Yeah. Roll 6d10 first. And we'll see if it'll affect her. Ugh. Now I'm going to have to do math. Um. Three. Plus nine. Twelve. Plus one. 13. Plus 9. 22. Plus 1. 
23. Plus 1. 24. Plus 8. Wait, was that? I thought that was 6. Huh? Did I? Oh, just kidding. So, yeah. Uh, unfortunately, she is not affected by it. Great! Okay. Um. However, if you did cast it, and I'm not gonna say that Garrett has a lot of point. So Garrett's now blinded. Great. Spider's coming after him. Well, maybe that's for the best. Um. <laughs> okay, fuck this magic shit. I'm just gonna... I'm gonna take out my crossbow. Well, she does have a turn, so I'll let you cro- okay. get it, but now she's crawling up and is now starting to unweave where Garen is being held up. Okay. And I'm gonna say... I don't know, I'll make it like death saves, but in reverse, so every time that she rolls over a 10, it gets him closer to death. So you got three rounds to save Garen, essentially. Jesus. Oh, wait, no, 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 that was a six. So no, she did not win this one, so she's actually kind of pulled back okay and is prone all right so i'm gonna i'm shooting her with my crossbow okay um roll, yeah just roll plus um i think it's dexterity for long ranged uh so that's gonna be a 12 okay a 12 plus dex which is plus two so 14 yeah um that that actually matches her AC, so you actually do get the hit. Cool. Uh, um. <laughs> so, yeah, roll... Um, 1d8. Yep. 1d8 plus 2. That's gonna be a 7 plus 2 is 9. So 9? Okay, that does in fact hit. And at this point, I think she's kind of done with your whole shit. And fucking leaps through the air at you. Actually, no, no, no. I like this better. Um, she shoots a web at you. Okay. Uh, target is restrained by webbing as an action. Okay, so it's a ranged weapon attack. So, 10, which I know does not beat your AC, so you just kind of fucking dodge out of the way, I guess. Like a boss. Yep. Alright, what do you do next? So she's on the ground again? Uh, no, no, no. She kind of turned her butt and shot webbing at you, but oh, she's I see. still up on there. Yeah. Okay. Um, ugh, I don't know what... I want to get him down, but I don't know how. Mm-hmm. Uh, I will say, the giant spider staring him in the eyes and almost killing him may be the one thing you want to do first. Yeah, okay. So, I guess that I'm going to do another a shot from my crossbow. Okay. Roll it. I got a nat 20. Oh, shit, Britta! <laughs> yes! Uh, 1d8 plus 2 times 2. That's gonna be... Wait, 1d8 plus 2 times 2? Yeah, because you got you a said? nat 20. You oh, double it. So, I got a 9 again. Like, 7 plus 2, a 9 again. Oh, you got a 9 the first time? Yeah. Okay, hold on. I did that math wrong then. Girl. Um, girl. So, a uh, double nine. You shoot this fucking spider. You straight up shot through the heart, this fucking spider. And then you see her body just slowly start to turn back into that human. But now she is bloodied, almost dead, and she drops from the rope. Okay, Featherfall, now, please. Okay, you cast Featherfall. Keep in mind, this is a very wide pit. Yeah, so I she's know. Now, she's now in the center of it, just slowly fo- floating down. So now, I want to... I, did I see where she stuck the ichor before she, like... Yeah, it was like in her jacket. Okay, so I'm going to cast Mage Hand then. And okay. pluck the vial out. <laughs> okay. Um, you pluck... I guess roll... Fucking slide a hand, because it is still hard to get something out of someone's jacket. True. Uh, let's see, slide a hand. I got a 18, like 16 plus 2. 
Yeah, you pluck it out, no problem. Um, and then let me roll to see how bad your luck is. Oh no, what? Oh, that's a four. Yeah, um, at about the same moment as you pluck it out, Garrett, one of the ropes... Dang! <laughs> ...gets, leaves away. Your mage hand is still out there, but now you have a choice of who to save. Garen or the Icker. Uh, well, I thought that the mage hand doesn't hold over ten pounds. Yeah, and an elderly woman can't pick up a car, but if her grandchild underneath it, she gonna pick it up Hulk style. All right, well, <laughs> I, I mean... Make your, make your choice. Do you want your only friend or the knowledge of everything in the universe? I'm I'm catching Garen. I, I have to. <laughs> Okay, the mage hand quickly drops and then grabs Garen, and you focus harder than you've ever focused in your wizarding career to carry him over to you and drop him back in safety. And you hear, um, <laughs> you hear fucking Jane on the way down, just like, why did you, oh, no, I guess she's not dead, but she's almost <laughs> dead, and she's just like, why did you do this to me? I literally told you the first thing you could do to someone before sending them <laughs> into a pit was cast Fazafall. <laughs> this is going to be like my whole weekend now. <laughs> oh, cool. The Icar fell down here. Awesome. Guess I'll drink some more. Oh, look, more stuff I know that you don't. Hey, like, how about you just like toss that back up here and maybe I'll uncast Featherfall. <laughs> Give me a minute. <laughs> <laughs> and she throws it and it does it. It's <laughs> barely. It just hit. <laughs> Oh, it hit me in the face. No. <laughs> I'm going to die falling. <laughs> Is there any way that I can help her? Like I feel super bad. <laughs> I was gonna say you could just me you could just like get a scorching ray and end it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean that might be the most humane thing to do. <laughs> Meanwhile, G Garen's just sitting over there, like, "What the fuck is happening?" I don't know, dude. I feel bad, but like, also, I feel like she's gonna trick me. <laughs> No, I would never trick you. Please. No one's talking to you. <laughs> I've got this. We could be besties forever. You wish. Um. All right. So now she's she's beyond saving now. Okay, uh, that's fine. Garen is uh, saved and is on the edge of the uh, uh, edge of the massive hole. What do you do? Uh, can I? Like, tell him to get away from the edge of the fucking massive hole. That'd be great. It's like, it could be worse. I could be, you know, over the top of it, hanging by a rope while you go and fight your giant spider friend. But, you know, it's fine. Yeah, but still, if you could, like, not do that, that'd be great. Okay, fine. Well, and then he pretends to fall into the mess of the... son of a bitch. <laughs> um... And then I like to think that was like, like a lovely moment where you like hit him in the chest and then you hug. Um, Aww. So now you guys are leaving the cave and Garen looks at you and he goes, you know, just because Vandalin burned, it doesn't mean that it's the end. We can rebuild it. I mean, I've met a lot of people, a lot of people who got put out just like we did and they're heading back to Vandalin. They want to... They want to rebuild, and after seeing what you did in there, we could use you. I don't... How is there even anything left to rebuild on? I mean, it it's perfect. Like, it's a flat plane. That way we could build up whatever we want on it. We've got people working on how to harvest up that black glass and use it in, in building and construction. I mean, no one's been able to chip away at it so far, but... We can bring Fandolin back. I I honestly would love to do that, but I there's things that I have to do. All right. And then he smiles at you and he goes, "Well, thanks for the Pringles. I 
I don't think I'm going to take the job at Sapphire Falls. Yeah, that might be a good idea, like I told you from the start. Yeah. Well, I'm going to... I think I'm going to head on. I've heard about this city called Refuge out, out somewhere, and they may need some help. And then Garen walks off into the sunset. Okay. Leaving uh, Sydney alone to ponder life and wonder if truly if Phandalin can be brought back. And that is the end of her story for right now. Spoiler alert, I don't think it can. <laughs> and you don't know? I don't, but I don't think so. Oh, uh, so, Brenna. Yes. We've done it. Another long-ass episode with d and I... Every time I'm so amazed that I make it out unscathed, I'm one day I'm just going to die. I mean, with me, the minute that the wyvern rolled a one and I'm like, that's, <laughs> I was like, I was planning on that being the majority of the bit was her fighting the wyvern. Well, that's okay. Cause I let us have an hour try to beat a fucking spider. <laughs> Because I didn't want to hurt the spider. I felt bad. Uh, so, Brenna, where can they find you on the internet? Look me up pretty much everywhere your heart desires uh, at Brennasaur, B-R-E-N-N-A-S-A-U-R. The end. <laughs> and yeah. You can, you can find me on Twitter at Scotty Mo, S-C-O-T-T-Y-E-M-O. Buy all my books on Amazon, the Queasel Corp trilogy, BS versus the Gods, or head to audibletrial.com slash BS Network. Get a free 30-day trial of Audible and get a free copy of any of my audiobooks over there, ladies and gentlemen. Check that out. Make sure to uh, check out all the other shows online at a load of pure BS.com. And remember to subscribe to the brand new Fun Fiction channel. That's out actually technically like three weeks old now, but still, well, br brand new channel where we I read some of my favorite fanfics from that we've done in the past. I read I'm um, starting a full series reading Venomous, the one we read a few weeks back when we were talking about Spooderman. Spooderman. And make sure to send in more fanfics, because I do need more stuff to read on there, ladies and gentlemen. So subscribe to that. Make sure to support us either on Patreon or merch.aloadofpurebs.com. Pick you up a Christmas sweater. And make sure to tune in next week, where I think it's going to be me joined by my buddy Jim Murphy from Opposite Attractions. We don't know what movie we're doing yet, though. But who knows? But until next time... And this feels so good to hear someone know what to say. <laughs> Stay away from baby Hitler. I know. I never stand away from baby Hitler. Oh, shut Please. up and fall down the hole already. Please. You cast feather fall, you <laughs> motherfucker. I'm a badass bitch. <laughs>